Do you think that maybe when JD Vance called um, Trump America's Hitler, it was more of a boast? This guy, he's our Hitler. <laughs> You know, I mean, they're going to run with that uh, message next, aren't they? He did call Trump uh, dangerous for America at one point, but I'm sure now he's like, no, no, I meant dangerously handsome. You know, like you <laughs> you want to you want to get in there and have a go at him like a couch cushion. Anyways, that's been the anyway. end. <laughs> <laughs>and welcome to a very special relationship the podcast that you can listen to in either a lorry or a truck i'm your host andrea bridges smith and with me here is matt johnston from the interesting times matt how interesting are the times currently on your side of the world uh yeah pretty interesting i, I tell you what before we move on to that i wonder if yeah. i could start because these things are going to i'll be honest things are going to get a little bit dark over here so okay. i wonder if i could start with a little bit of light uh, yes. light mood and talk about political assassinations. Um, Great. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so I, okay, I'm just going to say, I think we've got the best viewers on this podcast. We may not have the numbers of some of these other ones, but I'll tell you what, what we lack in quantity, we more than make up for in quality. We have great fans. Great fans. Um, so I think I mentioned last time that uh, when we talked about political assassination, I said we, we never had one in the UK. Um, Funny enough, we had, and I was completely unaware of it, it was a chap from 1812 called Spencer Percival, who was essentially oh. a Tory. Yeah, yeah, he got shot um, by a disgruntled uh, Jonathan Benjamin, I, I think the name is, uh, who basically was imprisoned by the Russians and believed he was due compensation by the government, which he never got. So, uh, you know, uh, he basically shot the prime minister. There we go. Uh, it's okay. the only time we've ever had a prime minister assassinated um, around about 210, 12 years ago. So a big thank you to um, the 60 of. Sorry, there's no more more name on that to, but, than that. <laughs> but uh, yes, I think can, round can of applause I... for that. That's that's outstanding yes. work. Yes. Thank you for the fact so, checking. Um, also want to say that Spencer Percival is... I, I keep thinking I've hear I've heard the most British name imaginable, and uh, that one that one is a chart topper. That is an extremely British name, Spencer Percival. Wow, <laughs> it's not bad, is it? I, I tell you what, I was thinking as well. Wait a minute, wasn't that one of the actors for, from uh, the Carry On films? <laughs> <laughs> Very no, <possible. laughs> no. So, um, I, Andrew, I want to start with this. There's many reports that Trump is considering gaining rid of white vance man uh, that's a bit of a joke for the brits there i mean uh, are you familiar with white van man uh no no haven't heard of that okay the white van man uh, sorry it's a little bit of a, a, a i suppose a dated sort of um what's it term but it means the sort of person that essentially drives a white van um cuts up people on the road you know and sort of only uh, kind of looks after themselves apologies to all those white van men that are not like that essentially we know that you guys keep <laughs> keep britain moving so it's a bit of a sort of a side i suppose anyway uh, any truth to the rumors that trump's um considering getting rid of vance i mean i doubt it uh that would mean admitting that he had made a mistake which is not something that donald trump does um i think the only way that that could happen is you know if we're looking at trump's past behavior around this sort of thing uh is you know the only possibility would be for him to be like jd who i don't know what he's talking about i never met the guy um that's my <laughs> terrible trump impression we're starting off real strong uh today <laughs> um you know so i i don't i think if he tried to do that this time it would be pretty noticeable so I think J.D. Vance is going to be stuck on the ticket. And in fact, I read this morning that his schedule is actually getting busier with more appearances, which is a, wow. just a great idea. Um, and, you know, <laughs> while the camera he rolling. Is certainly, yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> while he is certainly problematic, he's definitely not the worst person on that ticket. So we got to give him that much, at least. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I do like the fact as well that essentially trump would just deny 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 he showed pictures and video of the pair of them together and he just end up saying as you know as he invariably does when he starts to lose the argument he says you're very rude you're a very rude person and then refuse <laughs> to talk to that person anymore <laughs> that's two my trump really bad trump impression sorry two two right yeah. off the bat you guys welcome welcome to christmas in july <laughs> 
or August, I guess now. <laughs> so I've also heard rumours that um, J.D. Vance had sex with a sofa. Is this true? Was he pushing the cushion? <laughs> Uh, that rumor has been debunked, as ah. in I heard he prefers bunk beds to sofas, actually. No, no, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, J.D. Vance has not made sweet love to any furniture that we know of, but I do hope that we never stop talking about it because it's hilarious. Absolutely. And I hope <laughs> I hope those domestic soft furnishings get the help that they need. What I love about this story, and, and as you say, it's, it's being debunked, but it kind of doesn't matter. It's like the David Cameron uh, fucking a dead pig's head story. It kind of doesn't matter if it's true or not. You just run with it. Exactly. Everybody is just like, yep, it sounds like it could be true. Let's just keep talking about it. And instead of, you know, talking about Kamala's record on the border or something like that, you know, this is we're we're talking about couch cushions. I love it. Um, So, Matt, uh, some good news over here. Uh, We have gone over a week now without anything massively historic happening during our presidential election. Uh, and I just want to say that it's a real relief to turn on the news and not have it start with buckle up buttercup. It's about to get weird. (laughs) Um, we're just having like a normal week in politics. And by a normal week, I mean that, uh, Democrats and Republicans are attacking each other, but Democrats do seem to have found an attack that is really getting under the GOP skin. Oh, Oh, well, please do tell. Well, they're saying that Republicans and specifically Trump Republicans are weird. <laughs> well, well, now you come to mention it. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yes. <laughs> you see, it's great because it's true. They are weird. Uh, why do we want to only let people with children vote? That's weird. Um, you know, <laughs> inspecting transgender people's genitals before sporting events. It's it's weird. The cats, they're, what do they have against cats? It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. They're weird. Um, So now Donald Trump has actually hit back at Kamala Harris yesterday at, uh, of all things, (laughs) a, a, uh, a annual meeting for black journalists. Uh, they invited Donald Trump for some reason to show up and speak at that. And he did. And, uh, Matt, do you think that went well? (laughs) I I can only imagine it didn't do. No. It's so weird that you got that right. <laughs> How did you know? Huh? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yes. So apparently yesterday, um, he said that uh, Kamala turned black a few years ago because he was saying, you know, she used to be Indian and then she turned black. And, you know, which one is it? Uh, he, that is an actual thing that wow. he said wow. to a room full of black journalists. <laughs> And, you know, a lot to unpack there. First of all, if you can't hold the very simple idea in your head that someone can be multiracial, then I don't see why we should hand you the nuclear launch codes because you're too dumb to serve. Stupid. Also worth pointing out that uh, Trump used to be white, didn't he? Yes, and he's orange now, you know, which, what do we know? Yeah. It's hard to keep track of. Um, Then uh, J.D. Vance took a break from attacking childless women for their life choices to kind of uh, double down on that and try to clean up this mess um, and and say that, you know, Kamala Harris has has flip flopped on several things, uh, you know, and that's that's what Trump was trying to say is like, you know, she she never sticks to a position. And coming from the guy who used to call Trump America's Hitler and is now his running mate. That is yeah. quite rich. Uh, they are both living up to the claim of weirdness rather well, especially the racist and sexist tinge variety. Yeah, yeah, that, that that is very weird. Although if it's quite rich, they'll obviously both enjoy that as well. Do you think that maybe yeah. when J.D. Vance called um, Trump America's Hitler, it was more of a boast? This guy, he's our Hitler, <laughs> you know? I mean, they're going to run with that uh, message next, aren't they? <laughs> yeah Vote for uh, america's his- hitler yeah it's like it's maybe maybe that is what he meant uh it's, it's hard to say he did call trump uh dangerous for america at one point but i'm sure now he's like no no i meant dangerously handsome you know like you <laughs> you want to you want to get in there and have a go at him like a couch cushion anyways that's been the anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um over here the newly elected labor party are clearing out the cupboards hanging pictures looking through the old accounts and 
Oh, dear God. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> left it a bit too long having a rational, sensible government in. Ideally, you want one of those in year in, year out, of course, or at the worst, five years. But we left it 14 years and you never want to do that. Well, lesson learned. Now, you know, for next time, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Absolutely. Anyway, it appears the Conservative Party's numbers were just shy by £22 billion. Pounds. Oh, so, damn. When I say shy, just shy, I mean, that's not just shy. That's not leaving the house unless you're sure there's no one around and you're wearing a blanket over your head with your headphones <laughs> on, staring nowhere but at the ground level of bashful shy, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the story as these stories tend to be a bit more involved than that. The Tories put a few things in the book that they hadn't budgeted for. You're going to love this. The biggest one being housing asylum seekers in hotels, which was something that they currently do. They got a huge backlog on. And they hadn't budgeted for that because the Rwanda scheme would have worked so well for them. It just meant 70,000 odd people, shove them on a single flight and just straight off to Rwanda. There we go. Job done. Yeah, it seems like that plane would be have have to be pretty sizable to, to really fit all big. Those right. People, yeah. Right? Yeah. Just yeah. That's a double. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them heading off at the same time. Yeah. Right. And somebody actually mentioned, they said about boats. Why don't we send it, put them all on a boat? Because a boat would take more people, which is true. But it's also worth mentioning Rwanda is a landlocked country. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. Yes. Uh, it's, it's like then the, the boat docks and then what? You know? Yeah. It's... Unless it builds up a bit of speed, you know, like <laughs> the speed boats on Octopussy that are in those Florida yeah. planes that go straight across the. <laughs> Yeah, so, there you go. That's what you need. Just got to slam it into into overdrive and hope you can <laughs> scoot across. <laughs> so here we go. We're going to move on to a bit of a change of tack now, because I've no doubt you've seen, Andrea, um, and it's almost possible to ignore, I suppose, if you've been trying to catch up with any amount of UK UK news, uh, we're having a bit of a turmoil of it at the moment. Essentially, there's right. riots happening up and down the country and protests and various other things. This comes about because of the shocking news that 10 young girls... And two adults were stabbed at Southport, that's in Liverpool, and three of the girls have died died as a result. Now, this is clearly horrible. And there have been, a, as I say, a couple of nights of rioting, protesting by thugs, you know, the rioting, but also protesters as well. So a lot of this, though, has come about because of misinformation online. The first story that came out when it came to the, the information about the attacker was saying that they were an illegal immigrant. Okay. Then it transpires that he's actually from Cardiff. Then people were saying he's Muslim, but um, actually no. And his parents are from Rwanda, and it's the they're basically Christian people essentially. But because yeah. he's black and has a funny sounding name, um, it's uh, it's now been released. Funny enough, so you you will be able to find it online should you wish to do so. But again, there's a kind of a sense of what's the point unless you actually personally know him. What would be the reason for that? But never mind. Anyway, th this all comes about because of people spreading misinformation online, which just seems to be getting a bigger and bigger problem. And I don't know if the same thing is happening in the States, but a couple of weeks ago, there were riots in a place called Hare Hills in Leeds and now in Southport. And there appears to be trouble in South End and in Hartlepool. And in fact, England does seem to be a very angry place at the moment. But the continuous drip drip of racism and xenophobia from the usual, according to what they are, scum like Farage and other MPs, because they are MPs now and they should know better. You know, it's their job to calm people. It's their job to ask for restraints and that sort of thing, rather than peddle right-wing conspiracy theories. Anyway, right-wing news outlets as well are doing basically the same sort of thing. So um, they're all claiming that our problems are because of throwing open our borders and it just seems to have fueled all this. Fueled all this, I beg your pardon. So um, are, are you seeing the same sort of thing, Andrea, or is this in fact a very British problem? No, we're definitely seeing some of the same thing over here. Um, so, you know, we have been getting a very large amount of immigrants from Central America over the past few years, although it has slowed recently. Uh, but yes, if any one of them commits any violence, uh, then, you know, they tend to crow about it pretty loudly. Oh, you know, these these immigrants are coming in and they're all violent, which is, mm. of course, not true at all. Um, and, you know, then later on, you might find out, oh, never mind. It turns out they actually were a U.S. citizen with a brown sounding last name. But, you know, by then we've already worked ourselves into a lather, so we can just skip over that part. 
Um, but you know, the the misinformation thing that you're talking about is definitely a big issue. Uh, so you know, taking the uh, the Trump assassination attempt, for example, uh, which really does feel like it has happened light years ago at this point. <laughs> um, so weird. Uh, but right afterwards, um, the left and the right, and, and I will say, you know, both sides are guilty of this. They both rushed online and began claiming that the shooter was for the other side. And, you know, I, I just want to say to people, really, you don't have to rush to get the torches and pitchforks. Mm. They will still be there in the torch and pitchfork shed yeah. whenever yeah. you're ready for them. Yeah. Just give it a minute. Let the sort of general rage that you are carrying around at the world just sort of simmer for a bit until all the facts come in you know be yeah. patient let's i know you want to start a riot but let's figure out why we're having the riot before we have the riot okay you just yeah. you know yeah just stand down stand down guys get like, get some facts first you're gonna have plenty of time to be mad about it for sure just everybody needs to calm down and like figure out what's going on yes well said. Well said. I, I'm hoping as well that the next, I, I, I think it, you know, it, it, you might see a few more over the next few days, but I'm hoping as well that the, the the sensible, you know, rational side that we're known for, although that slips, you might argue, over the last uh, one and a half decades odd, um, <laughs> but the more sensible side that we're generally uh, worldwide known for will start to come out and will start to be going back to something like a normal country again. You know, this is what I think is funny about uh, about Britain is, you know, it it seems there are kind of, you know, two very extreme settings of, you know, mm. stiff upper lip, very stoic, and then soccer hooligan, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. And then it, it's like, is there like a middle part? Like you guys don't seem to do that middle part at all. It's just like, yeah. it's one or the other, you know? <laughs> Our emotional thermostat's broken. Yes, I think that's fairly uh, <laughs> fairly obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like tick, 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 tick. that's what we need, isn't it? We need uh, yeah. It's, it's it's either kind of okay, take a breath, everybody. No, it's fine. Or charge. Yeah, right, yeah, right. One or exactly. the other. There's no middle ground, is there? All right. I, I, I tell you what. We, we've um we have covered that. You know that the sort of harsher things as we if you like. So I'd like to finish on a happy note, if I may. The Paris Olympics, have you been watching that? Yes, yes, I've been having so much fun watching it. Um, we, it turns out we have very good gymnasts in America. Yes, uh, so we're, we're very good at that. Uh, so what about the Brits? What medals have you guys been picking up? Because the coverage over here, you wouldn't know there were other athletes from other countries. <laughs> they just show you the Americans. I think I saw an Italian person the other day and it's like, oh, how novel. Um, but uh, really <laughs> very... Uh, America focused, which I know must come as a surprise, given our wonderful, whole wonderful. Deal. I, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be the same to a certain point in, in, in other countries as well. So we, we have picked up quite a few uh, medals. I've been looking at the medal table, which I, I feel bad about because let's be honest, it's a horribly reductive way of looking at all these extraordinary accomplishments and stories of you know human endeavor, that sort of thing, and excellence. But at the last count, we were fifth in the table, one place but, um, above you guys, in fact. So I think we had one more oh. gold medal. That might have changed during the time that we've actually come on air and we're sat there talking about it. And you'll probably blow us all out the water. But um, <laughs> the British accomplishment, I'm most impressed by that. Well, in fact, two. Uh, firstly, a chap called Alex Yee, who won the triathlon, which in this heat, or in the heat that obviously us Europeans aren't used to, uh, was pretty amazing, really. Um and it's yeah it's just you know it's that one way of course the triathlon you're doing the swimming first isn't it swimming cycling and then running and i'm sitting there going ah that's just that just looks like so much work yeah the, the 100 meters don't know uh how well they have it do they right right exactly <laughs> <laughs> so he, he the triathlon they did have to swim in the Seine river right oh oh god yes that's even worse isn't it yeah, yeah that's right. very makes it even more impressive <laughs> Yes, yes, because you're you're not swimming through crystal clear water. Let's uh, let's put it that way. I'm sure it's right. fine. Any French people listening, I'm I'm sure it's fine. Please don't give us a hard time. Uh, okay. And the second one is a chap called Adam Peaty, who was the swimmer mm -hmm. who just missed out on gold, um, winning silver in the hundred meter breaststroke while having COVID symptoms. Yes, he's come down with the dreaded virus, so I imagine he'll have to self isolate. But that's 
I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? When I had COVID, getting through the bed to the toilet was my idea of a struggle. Anyway, uh, what about you, Andrea? <laughs> Any highlights? Uh, yes. Uh, so as I mentioned, I've uh, been watching a lot of the gymnastics um, and um, the, you know, the, the U.S. women's team, just watching Simone Biles do a floor routine will just bring you joy because she, she can flip flop, you know, better than J.D. Vance uh, <laughs> with his opinion of Trump. Um, she, she is the, the queen of, of the flip flopping and it's just so much fun to watch. Um, she, she, can, she can get really high. She's yes. like this big, she's teeny tiny and she can get like really, really high. And so that was cool. There's uh, this one guy uh, that they're calling Clark Kent over here. And his name is Steven, and I'm going to mess this pronunciation up. I think it's Netarashik. Uh, and he the guy is... With the vault, the, 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 the horse thing. The pommel horse guy, yes, with yeah, the glasses. Yes. And then he, like, takes off the glasses, and it's like, oh, damn. Like, and he, <laughs> you know, is like this world-class athlete, and then he gets off, and he puts the glasses back on, and he's like, nerdy Rubik's Cube guy. <laughs> and uh, that guy was fun to watch. And I also am wondering, you know, what are the what is the path that leads one to be like i'm just palm a horse that's my thing just yeah. i'm just going to do the palm a horse i don't know what that path is like uh but i'm interested i want to know more uh but watching that guy you know the do his uh nerdy gymnastic thing was pretty cool <laughs> wow yeah yeah i i saw that somebody said he was looking at the um horse or oh, sorry the pummel horse yes he was looking at this piece of equipment i can't even call it right never mind anything else um but he was looking at it for two hours or something he had his glasses yeah. off or, or so you know he was just focused on you know just the sort of the the yeah extraordinary i'll tell you what i watched the other night was have you seen any of the rugby no uh i i forgot i rugby was watching was and it was again <laughs> one of those I said I would do this, didn't I? I was watching sort of like two in the morning and it was the sevens rugby. It wasn't two in the morning, but it was the sevens women's rugby. And it was a the bronze medal matchup between Australia and America. Oh. And America won it. It's, I mean, Australia were just pounding them left, right and centre for about a good 10 minutes. And America just held back, held back. There's wonderfully, some, something wonderfully kind of like you know, that, that American optimism, if you like, that they held on as they did. And then this woman broke a couple of tackles and she's off. And you just, you know, fr virtually from her own line. And you hear this roar, because I imagine, <laughs> and this is another problem for all the athletes and stuff, right? Is most of the time you're playing in front of 20, 30 people. All of a sudden there's 30,000 there. The noise right. must be insane to what you're used to. Uh, and yeah, she's off, she's running dead ahead. And I'm sitting there going, nobody's going to catch her but I, I you know she got to the other end um ball down just at the last seconds run out and just easy for the kick over the what they call the conversion which is kick through the uprights and they won um but i have to ask because of course this is australia which is no, well known in being a rugby powerhouse um double world champion i think certainly in the men's probably in the women's too um and I already mentioned about the American cricket, about how they beat the Pakistani two, were ex-world champions, of course. Do the Americans care that much when it comes to things like that? Or are they just like, ah, it's not our thing, don't bother? We would care if we heard about it. Uh, I I hadn't heard any, I'm finding out from you uh, right. about all of this. Um, I Rugby over here is not really, it's not Fair really enough. a thing. Uh, I recommend like cricket. <laughs> if you're able to find it on YouTube, the highlights package of that, because I guarantee, and again, you're obviously I sport it slightly because of the fact that I've mentioned the score, but I guarantee by the end you'll be going, come on, come on, that sort of thing, right? Because okay. rugby has a tendency to do that for you. Okay, all right. I'll go check it out. That sounds good. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. So uh, thank you all, muchly everybody, for joining us today. That's all the time that we have for today. Um, Please subscribe to Andrew's channel uh, to keep abreast of the fun, as we outside the US are calling it, <laughs> going on in America. That's at Phoenix News Network. Now, we have may have less political madness over here, but there's certainly a good deal of unrest to keep up with. So 
for the UK, my weekly updates can be found on my channel at theinterestingtimes.co.uk. And we will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.